everyone, it's Brandy. Oh, sorry, I just kicked my cord. Hey guys, um, I told you on my live last night that I would come back and try to do a second coat on this piece here. So um, I'm here and I'm gonna paint. So if you feel like watching me paint and listening to me yap, I'll be on for a little bit. Hang on, I'm gonna turn, oh, I'm gonna turn my light off. And the reason I'm gonna do that is so you guys can see that I think the colors are a little more true. When I turn my camera light on, you guys can see me better, but the colors on my piece are, are a little distorted from the lighting. So last night, hi Shelly, yay, you guys can see me. Hey Stephanie. Um, so last night I showed this piece and um, what I was doing on here, this is not my final look, but I was showing you what a first coat looks like for me. I On a first coat, I'm just getting my concept together get my colors kind of laid out. And then once I have something, I can duplicate that for my second coat. So that's what I did last night. Hi, Michelle, oh, and Marilyn. Oh, hey guys. Um, so I, I laid out my colors last night and this is kind of where I am. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of texture to this. And um, if you watch my live from last night, I know you made it to a live. I know, it's just me on my page. I'm just gonna paint tonight. Um, but if you watched last night on the Dixie Bell page, I, hey Carrie Beth, um, I am matching this to an existing piece. I'm gonna show you guys which one it is. It's this over here, if you guys can see me. So I posted this one already before. This is the piece that I'm matching. So these are gonna go in the same room together. So I want my blues to coordinate. Um, so that's probably the toughest part about this piece is, oh, thank you, Erin, um, is I needed to coordinate with another piece. So I need to get the depth of the blue the same as on my other one. So I'm going to turn my light back on now so you guys can kind of see better what I'm doing. Um, but you can see it changes the colors. So just like, you know, with any photography, Lighting will change your color, but you guys can probably see me better. Um, it is pretty like this, but I think I want to add a little more texture and interest. This was just my rough layout, but now that I've got colors on here, um, I've got coverage, and now I can just, you know, put it on how I think it's going to work. So I have most all the colors I had out last night. Where do you buy your spray bottles? So these are hairstylist misters, and I get them on, I, I get mine on Amazon. People have said that you can get them at Hobby Lobby and Michael's, too. They're about $10 each. Mine's well-loved, you can see, but I get mine on Amazon, so it's shipped right to my door. Um, it's actually in my Amazon shop, too. Thank you, Becky. So let me show you guys what colors I have out. Um, so my top here is Driftwood. Then I've got some um, gravel road here, and then it goes into Bunker Hill Blue. Um, and I custom mixed a little bit of Peacock and, um, um, ah, <laughs> Mermaid Tail into that to get a little more green in there. And so then it goes into a true Bunker Hill. I wanted to show you guys this too. My drawer is out this time because Last night after I painted, I came back and I took all my drawers out and I touched up around the edges and I touched up whatever color it was next to. So my drawer edges match. Um, just so you guys could see what I do there. I'm going to put the drawer back in now though. So this is my last drawer. If I could get it in, that would be great. my last drawer so then it goes into that true bunker hill blue and then um, there's some in the navy in there and midnight sky so i've got like six colors on here and they all just kind of flow into the next one um so i am just going to start painting i have out my sea sponge and i might use this tonight i'm going to dampen it in case i go to use it so i'm just spraying it with a spray bottle and squeezing that in. Yeah, the Mr. Bottles are the... 
I know I don't let the wood peek through, but people always ask like, why do you paint with doors in on camera? And I don't, I take them out, I swear, but you, you can't show the front of a drawer on camera without it being in the dresser. Um, so I'm gonna go back, I've got 57 brushes out. Um, I just kind of grabbed anything I have, and so they range from my Dixie Belle brushes. I don't have enough of these to only use these yet. They're still a new brush. And then I've got some zebra brushes, which I, I still really like them. Um, these are all different kinds of Dixie Belle too. And I rinsed them out last night, so they're all wet from painting last night. Oh, I also have out a Wooster brush, because I have a ton of them. Thanks, Janice. Hey, Pamela. Um, I'm not wearing painting clothes, so I'm gonna try to not get super dirty tonight. Ha ha ha, good luck, right? I'm gonna sit on the floor and I will move my piece instead of me moving around. We'll see if that works. Um, I'm gonna start with driftwood. What are you guys up to tonight? Oh, the Dixie Belle brushes are awesome. I really like them. I genuinely, genuinely like them. If I use a product over and over again, you can tell that I, that I like it. It's something I stick with. You know, sometimes I'll try something and then it'll disappear. And those are just the things that aren't my favorites. Um, but the brushes I like. Hi, Jennifer. What's up, baby? Oh, yeah, that's going to happen. It's a foam bowl. Okay, so this is my second coat, so I'm going to use a lot more water than I used last night. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to start with um, driftwood. And I usually, I'm going to separate this into like quadrants. So I'll work this section, then this, then this, then this. But I'm going to start in the middle and I'll work over and then I can kind of connect them. What, sweetie? No, I really don't want you guys on video. So my brushes are damp because I painted with them last night. I have my back turned to the camera, so sorry, I can't read comments very well. Yeah, you want to read to me? Can you see my phone? Yeah. Can I turn it around? Um, no, you can't change it when I'm on camera. Oh, I also got out Manatee Gray. I wasn't using that last night. Ooh, two nights in a row, Kylie. You need to get out, girl. Stop watching me paint. Just kidding. I love it. Please watch me paint more. Um, so I'm going to introduce some Manatee Gray. I didn't have that before, but I think Mom, that's the shade of gray that I'm going for. Someone says, someone named Ande Bondi Kepler says it's round. It's round? Yeah. Um, one of the brushes, huh? Uh -huh. So she's talking about the Dixie Pearl brushes, the wrong ones, huh? Mm -hmm. My son's out here. He's going to help me read. Squishy mm -hmm. green stuff. Yeah, my works, my new workspace is so much better. Can open my paint. Um, I said this last night on my video. Sorry if it's repetitive, but... Um, Carrie Beth Rose says... Replying to Kyle Silver, me too. Yeah. Um, I said this on my live last night, but my, my old workspace was in my garage, and I, I'm so grateful for it. That's where my business started, and it served me well for a long time. Um, but it was in my garage, and every time I went to go live, I had to move half of my belongings out of the way. Nobody saw that part, so I was hesitant to go live because it took so much work to get there, to get on, um, that I would, I, I really didn't like to do it. So I feel like I can do more now and it doesn't take me as much effort. Um, maybe can you go in my drawer and grab me a brush, a fat one like this, but a dry, I need it dry. Okay, not wet. My brushes are all wet. I'm gonna turn my sea sponge, because I, I, want, I want the spongy texture. So I just blended these together but I'm gonna kind of use my sea sponge to erase the lines between the two. And um, I'm also doing that because the other piece that I'm matching this to was done with a sea sponge. So then they'll have a similar texture even if the colors are different. Perfect, that's exactly what I'm doing, thank you. So I'm um, dipping my sea sponge into my three shades of gray, which are gravel road, manatee, and driftwood. Can you push that closer to me? Yeah, okay. 
closer. More. When do you do the sides of the drawers? I do them when I'm doing my first coat. I will take them out and touch them up so my paint matches. I also am taking them out to make sure I'm not painting my drawers shut. You guys closer, because number one, I can't see, and number two, you guys can't see me what I'm doing. So I have my sea sponge. I, um, Right, I swear. Is Leah on? She's here and I can't see. Um, so I have my sea sponge out and I'm just blurring out some of these lines with my sea sponge. This is gravel road and manatee gray. Um, manatee? Yeah, manatee. Or Mason Dixon. Manatee, sorry. Had to check that. I got out Mason Dixon too. Um, so I'm giving it a little bit of texture and also using this to blur my lines out um, and to layer my grays. And I'm doing this because the other piece I'm matching um, has a sea sponge texture. Will there be texture from the sponge? Yeah, there will be texture from the sponge. And that's what I want. I want a little bit of the sponge texture. So I'm painting it on and then I'm deliberately adding the sponge texture. So this is Gravel Road. Um, on this side, I wanted to keep my a little more gray over here. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know. I sit on the floor all the time and I have one knee that really bothers me. So my knee has been driving me crazy and I'm wearing a knee brace and my leg hurts today. Um, so like I just added the paint on and then I'm coming back and sponging over it to get that texture. Yay. Yeah, um, the sea sponge is to blend, but it's also for texture. I want the texture in my paint on this one because I'm matching to another piece that also has sea sponge texture. Um, so now I'm gonna come back with another brush and I'm gonna add in some blue because I'm starting to get into my blues here. Okay, this is, um, this is a mix of colors I made here. It's got some mermaid tail and peacock in it. Um, and I wanted it because I want a little more green in some of my blues before I go into the straight Bunker Hill. Just trust me guys, I didn't mess it up. Um, no, I'm just casually painting tonight. This is not a big formal live. You know, um, some people joke with me like I should set up a live feed to my garage so you know it just notifies you anytime I come out here. So that's kind of what this is, just a live feed to what I'm doing tonight. Um, I just posted on my page, you guys need to help me, we've been at Lowe's today, I've been out tile shopping. Um, I don't know, I need to pick a backsplash for my kitchen and I question everything, so that's my weakness, I second guess everything I do. And so making some of these choices for the house has been so tedious. Um, my kitchen's not even put together yet. Um, so now I'm coming back with my sea sponge, which already had some grays on it, and I'm just going to blur this all out. Um, I can change it to a different side. I want less gray as I'm coming down. So I change it to one of the clean sides. I go to another clean side. I'm using my... Um, I know, I scare you, huh? I swear, it, you know, it always gets worse before it gets better. Always. Um, this is adding a little more gravel road. Seriously, it's just paint, though, so I feel like even if I mess it up, and I, I scare myself sometimes, like, oh, my God, what am I going to do with that? Um, everything has a fix. So I just took my brush because I needed to get into this little crevice right here. Brush a little more paint in there. See this part I've done right here looks pretty so far, huh? It's a great tool. It's a great tool. Why did we get away from the sea sponge, guys? I 
Okay, I'm gonna add a little more paint down here because I'm getting into the slower area. So for that, I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna open up In the Navy and Midnight Sky. Yeah, the gray is pretty, huh? Gravel Road is my favorite gray, and it's my favorite gray because, here's Gravel Road. Um, uh, got a bad glare on it. Gravel Road can go warm or it can go cool. And that is my, it's my favorite gray. Hey, Delma. Um, so now I'm going to take my brush that I was working the blues with and wet my surface. And I'm going to go in the navy down here. And I'm going to stir it in with my Bunker Hill over here. And then down here at the bottom, I want it to be really dark, so I'm going to do a Midnight Sky. My Midnight Sky is almost gone. I'm going to have to get out another container, and it's getting dry, too. There's, like, barely any paint in there. But I'm going to use every bit because this stuff is worth a fortune. Yeah, I love Gravel Road. It's, it's, um, it actually makes my top three. We just had to do these questionnaires for Stephanie, you know what I'm talking about. Um, Dixie Bell sent us out these lists of questions that we had to name our top three. And Gravel Road makes my top three because it is a complex gray that can go either blue, I mean, either um, cool or warm. It's great for shading. Okay, so I've got my paint laid on. It's not perfect. I'm gonna go with my sea sponge. I'm not gonna do my gray side. I'm gonna do the blue side. Add a little bit of water to it. And add some texture to this. Can you guys see the texture? It's super pretty. You know, this is tedious because I'm just, I have to pounce on it and go over the same spots like 20 times. Need more water. What was the other two of my top three? Um, so my number one is Stormy Seas. And I chose Stormy Seas because Stormy Seas is another one of those complex colors where it can be blue, it can be gray, but it's always pretty. So Stormy Seas was my number one. Um, drop cloth because drop cloth is this universal white that is always always perfect it um it's a great highlighter it's beautiful on its own i'm going to pounce this with my brush because my sponge has a little too much gray in it it's getting gray in there i don't want to lose the texture i could go get another sea sponge too that would be a good idea I should probably have a blue one going and then a gray one going too. So what did I say? So drop cloth, stormy seas, and gravel road are what I picked. Stephanie, if you're on, tell me what your top three were. How's that look? It's got texture in there. It's a little stormy. Um, that kind of matches what I have going on on, my, uh, on the other piece. I'm gonna put in a little of this greeny blue in here. Um, the more you layer the colors on each other, the more depth it gets because you see them peeking through and it's really dramatic. That was, I'm adding a little bit of the Bunker Hill right now. Um, this light distorts colors even for me, and it's really hard for me to, I don't know, to gauge my color with this light on. So I'm hoping I'm on the right track. Okay, I'm misting my surface, and I'm going to add a little more gray in there. That's more than I wanted. You know what I'm talking about? You know what? It's probably not more than I wanted. I should have used Gravel Road, and I used Manatee. Um... I'm gonna go get another sponge. I need one for gray and one for blue. Yeah, because I want my gray to carry down here on this side, and that side's a little more blue. I don't hear my kids, they're quiet. That usually means trouble. You know what? Um, 
Shelly, if you can't get the blending down, the sea sponge is an awesome tool. I'm not joking. I, I mean, I feel like the sea sponge has a bad rap. And, you know, if you get that really spongy look, then yeah, it, it's not good. But if you keep working it, see how much I'm working just this one little door? If you keep working it, it's a blending tool and it gives depth to your color. You can even take it and instead of the dabbing that I'm doing, if you do like a streaking, it will take that spongy texture away even more if you don't want that. The spongy texture has like a stone effect almost. You can do a combination of the um, streaking and the dabbing, so I'm kind of smearing out some of the dab lines right now. I don't want that either. How's that look? That's pretty, huh? I like it. I'm gonna back you guys up so you can tell. This is my second coat. It's, I mean, it's got unevenness in there, but it's dramatic. So I'm gonna, you know what? I don't have the texture down here, so let me add a little bit. These were my, the darker blues. So I'm really just putting a little bit of lighter blue on top of them. I like this section. I'm pretty happy with right here. So now I need to carry this line and I'm going to start working over into this next section here. I'm going to push my paint over. I said I was going to move my piece, but oh, it's not that easy. There we go. I'm going to grab another sea sponge really quick. Hang on. I know the sea sponge is good. Hang on guys. I'm getting another sponge. Hang on, hang on, I'll be right back. I'm looking for them. Okay. Well, these are the two I can find. I like this one, but it's huge, and it's hard for my hand to hold, so I don't use this one a lot. Maybe I should cut it. Like if I cut this in half, I could hold it better. Thank you, Marianne. Isn't it? It's dramatic, right? The blues are kind of dramatic. Let me tilt you guys, tilt you guys up. Um, sea sponges can go to craft stores or Walmart. Exactly. Um, I prefer, so here's the difference. This is a natural sea sponge. This is an artificial sea sponge. Hey, Terry. Um, so I like this artificial one because it fits my hand perfectly. I like the texture of it. You can cut it, Janice. I'm scared to. Um, but it is, it's way too big to be functional. All right, should I cut it? Means I need to go find scissors. Okay, hang on. I'm telling you, my knee is killing me. Uh, I'm digging in my tool drawer. Hang on, I'm looking for scissors. I had them out the other day. All right, well, I don't know where they are. I just had them out and I knocked them on the floor today. Oh, here, here we go. Okay, sorry. I didn't put my stuff away. All right, ready? I'm nervous. All right, go big or go home, right? Although I'd probably choose going home. Oh, okay. See, that cut really easily. That's not so bad now. It'll fit my hand better. Still not as great as the artificial one. Okay, I'm going to get these wet. Stop talking and get back to painting. Shut up, Brandy. I'm painting. You cut yours too, Annie? Okay, that makes me feel better. I don't want to waste a sea sponge that I haven't even really used yet. Okay, so I cut it and then I wet it just a little bit, dampened it, and now I'm working the water in. Because otherwise they're, I mean, they're crusty. This is dry and firm. I'm entertaining without sound. <laughs> Good. Crystal? Cut it into four pieces. Well, I have a bunch of these little tiny ones, and I don't like this because I end up with my fingers all in everything. Okay. I really like this side. Think I can repeat it? We'll see. So 
Um, although I am seeing up here, I didn't get into this little crevice. So I'm going to take my brush with the um, gray on it and pounce this little corner. So my brush with gray really has blue. And I don't want blue. That's more gray. This is just for this upper corner here that my sponge couldn't really get into that very well. So I'm just duplicating the texture with a brush. You could do this with a brush the whole way, I guess. It's not quite as, um, I don't know, it doesn't have the same randomness as, a, as the sponge does though. So I'm just doing this right here to add paint and I'll come back and add the texture. So that was Manatee Gray. This is Gravel Road. I'm going to get some paint on here and then I will work it for the texture. Manatee, or Driftwood. God, I said Gravel Road. Driftwood, this is Manatee Gray. Now I'm going to bring in some Gravel Road. Gives me a little bit of darker gray to play with as I get down here. You know, I'm just working small sections at a time. You think about maybe putting your projects on a bench. Yeah, that would be a, probably a good idea. That would probably be a good idea. Um, I'm okay once I'm sitting down. It's the, the getting up and the down that really, really just kills me. Like last night, I on my live, I had to get up off the floor, and I, I mean, it hurt. It hurt. My blues are starting to get mixed colors on them, so as they do more, like I have one now that's got to be dark blue. This one's kind of my medium. This is my light gray, and I need to try to keep them um, dedicated to their color. I'm going to come in here and add some of this... Um, really greenish blue. It's got a lot of gray in it now though. That's okay because I'm mixing it into the gray. I'm going to work these together a little bit. I'm using my phone like a mirror so I can see what's going on, how it looks to from another angle. Oh, blurry. Oh, the wheels are awesome, huh? There, if I move that out. All right, I'm just gonna go like halfway over right now and I'll come back and I'll do just this section and then I'll move that way as I keep going. This is uh, in the Navy. And I'm gonna put a little bit of Bunker Hill in between and then I'm gonna work these together. So they're kind of laid on. It looks terrible. And now I'm just going to work them in together. This part. I'm working this corner up here right now. Um, this is the side of my sponge that I dedicated to the grays. And I'm just working that darker color into the lighter, it's starting to set up. I want to keep it wet because I'm using this to add texture. I want my paint to stick to it right now. Um, so we spent the day at Lowe's and oh, I had to take my car into the shop. I have a Honda, a 2016 Honda and my check engine light came on the other day. And they're saying it's my fuel injector. Um, but thankfully, they're going to cover under the warranty, even though I just, just left the factory warranty like a month ago. So they're saying they're going to cover under my warranty. Thank gosh, because I should not be having a problem already. So 
little small areas at a time until I get the color that I want. You know, I'm in this section right here. I need to come over here a little bit before this starts setting up because I don't want that line. And if I let it dry, it'll be harder to get rid of it. Um, I need some gray to come this way. I'm gonna use my brush for my gray. Oops, that was the wrong brush. Come in here with uh, driftwood. Because I'm gonna eat, this is gonna be my lightest gray section. It gets darker over here, up in this corner. Amy, what is your favorite blue? Favorite blue is Stormy Seas. Um, if you want to consider that a blue, definitely the Stormy Seas. I love In the Navy. Um, they're tealy blues. I really like Savannah Mist. Um, that's a nice sophisticated blue. It's still in the teal family, that light teal, but it's not like a, it's a little bit more sophisticated version. Um, I love mermaid tail. Mermaid tail is a really fun color. If you're doing a, you know, really fun piece, it's a great accent color. I mix with uh, mermaid tail a lot. I'm gonna add in some darker blue in here. For your favorite color, Stormy Seas. It's my favorite color too. It always, always looks good. It's, it's just a really pretty color. In fact, um, now that we have our house done and I get to pick colors that I want on pieces in my house, I want to do a Stormy Seas piece in my house. So in my house, I have the Colonel Mustard piece that I did is in my house. That's in my entryway. Um, I have, um, what else do I have? Oh, I'm gonna do a, a um, patina paint piece. That's coming up. I have it sitting. Can you see it? No, that's a different piece. I have it sitting behind me because I need to strip the wax off and I'm gonna repaint it with patina paint. And um, I wanna do a Stormy Seas piece and then I'm working on a set, a, a set of gentlemen's chests um, in dried sage. Favorite product other than paint? Oh man, you guys are hot with the trivia questions tonight. Um, favorite product? Okay, can I pick two? Can I pick two? I really, really, really like their top coats. And I like it because um, satin is my current favorite. They go on thick. So when you're putting on a top coat, you know, on a, on a vertical surface like this, it wants to drip everywhere. And so they're a little bit thicker, so they stay put really, really well. And then the top coats go on with a little bit of a white. So um, when they dry, they turn clear. So you can also tell as your clear coats are drying. I love their clear coats and I love the brushes. Thank you, Angie. <gasps> oh my gosh, Ildiko, is that you? Oh my gosh. Guys, Ildiko Horvath is, um, I remember watching you, Ildiko, when I first started painting, you were in, um, oh gosh, what was, the, you know, the furniture staging group. I saw your work. Oh, Ildiko was at, um, Annie Sloan, um, what does she call her? Painters in Residence, last year. And every piece she does is just one that makes you stop in your tracks. So talented, so talented. Don't watch me paint, girl, I should be watching you. Um, I see many like starting to get numb. So this is in the Navy. I wanna add some um, Bunker Hill Blue over here. So I'm kinda happy with where this is right here. Now I'm gonna carry it over right here. Used to get done. So this, I was heavier on the grays coming down. Now I'm gonna bring the gray up and go heavier on the blues over here as I go. I'm running out of room. I'm gonna have to move myself. I got, um, I, 
I've got a lot of pieces that are complete, but I'm doing multiple pieces for the same person. And so they don't go away until I finish the multiple pieces. So I'm storing a lot right now. How long have you been painting? That's either my greatest strength or my weakness. Um, I literally did my first, 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 first ever piece in 2016. So two years now, no joke. Um, and I always wonder if I tell people that, does it, do I lose credibility for not having been a painter for very long? But it was something I just picked up and it really, and I took to it. Like, you know, I've always been creative and um, crafty and I'm a DIYer and all that stuff. And I did one piece in 2016. I started telling this story last night. Um, we have a rental property and we had a tenant who trashed our rental property. Um, if you're watching, you know who you are and I hate you. And they left like six dump loads of, of stuff in the house. And the state of California says you can't, you can't get rid of their belongings. You have to store them. So we ended up storing their belongings two years, I swear. Um, so we ended up storing these belongings from our rental property and I came back to it. It's, you know, after like a year of storing, I just kind of forgot about it. Wasn't worth it. I needed to not deal with it. Um, so we, I let them sit for like a year and I came back to it. And the furniture was like real wood furniture. It was decent stuff. I'm like, I can't just put this on the curb. So I read about this crazy thing called chalk paint on Pinterest. And, you know, went to the craft store and got cheap craft store supplies and um, painted my first piece. And it sold rapid fast. And I was like, hey, this is a really good deal. Um, so that was how it started. That was August of 2016. I started my Facebook page in November of 2016. Um, and then got picked up by Dixie Bell in November of 2017. So I had been painting for about a year. Things moved incredibly fast. I, um, you know, learned on the fly as I was going. I'm adding a little bit of gray in here and I'm going to use it like a highlight. I'm going to blend it out, but I'm going to use it because I've got a curve in my drawer here and I think it will be pretty to have just this, you know, highlight in the centers. And I don't want it to be um, too ridiculous. So I'm going to blend it out pretty good. So that's kind of my story. So I don't know. I always hesitate when people ask me, like, how long have you been painting? Because I don't want to lose credibility. Um, I mean, I learned, I, I dedicated myself to this, to, to learn how to do it. That's how I do things. I'm all in on everything I do. And I read and I watched all your guys' videos and I silently was looking at pictures behind the scenes, you know, like Ildiko's pictures and Stephanie's pictures, Stephanie Kuhn from Rehab to Fab. Um, you know, I was watching and learning everything from other painters and that's kind of why I, I feel like it's an honor to be able to paint and teach other people because I learned that way too. Um, so I appreciate everyone who teaches. Oh, Kira Beth, I'm so glad that that's inspirational because, um, yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I wonder, I don't want to lose credibility because I'm not, I haven't been doing this for very long, but. I, I did, I went all in on it. Um, just tried stuff, and since then I've done several hundred pieces. So the novelty of it has definitely worn off. I've learned a lot along the way. You know, some things I did when I first, first started, I used to wax all my tops. I used to wax everything. Um, and I since have started using top coats, clear coats a little bit more. I love the texture and the look of wax. Um, 
but customers really, really, really appreciate the security of a clear coat. So I do that um, more now because I think customers appreciate it. If it's gonna be in your own home and you're comfortable with wax maintenance, then, you know, I love wax. But a lot of people, it makes a lot of people nervous. And because I sell, uh, you know, my pieces are going to customers, um, I don't want to saddle them with that when I'm not sure it's something they're comfortable with, if that makes sense. You want to make them? You want to make it right now? Is that what oh, you're saying? I need beans for that. Um, I need that stuff. Daddy's probably almost home, sweetie. I'll check if we have beans. Otherwise, no. Beans. Yes, I know we do, sweetie, because I, I got some at the store last time. Sorry, my son's talking to me about dinner. To which I said, what's that? We don't do dinner. You're laughing at my story. Yeah, lear yep, learning and quiet. And then once I felt confident enough, I never posted in some groups because I always saw like the criticisms. Um, number one criticism, I didn't have a white backdrop. I just didn't have it. And it wasn't a feasible thing to do in our last house. I knew we were gonna be building a house. I didn't wanna modify our existing house while we were gonna be selling it. So I was in a transition that just didn't make it feasible. How's this look right here? Are we good? Okay, so I'm gonna come over here now, work this a little bit more, this side. Yeah, there. Um, I'm going to blend this out. I'm using a brush. I'm using a, my Dixieville natural brush, bristle brushes. I love these brushes, but man, I mean, tell me if I'm the only one. They lose bristles like crazy. See, I've got two right there. That's what they do. I freaking hate it, but I love the brush. What do you do? I need to find a natural bristle brush that doesn't lose bristles like that. I'm trying to really blend this out. How's that look? Okay. Yeah, it does have depth. It's, it's the colors layering on top of each other as I'm sponging them together. My fingers are filthy, my sponge is filthy. I've got gray on one side, blue on the other, and I'm just going back and forth. Um, so yeah, so this is me yapping tonight. Um, this is manatee gray. And I'm adding the colors on. Now I need to get it to um, mix right here where I kind of stopped. So I'm going to add some driftwood. These are all Dixie Belle colors. Um, so going back to my story. Um, yeah, I just, I, I didn't post because I didn't have a white backdrop. I couldn't modify my existing home to make one. Um, I didn't want to appear that I needed one. <laughs> Um, so I just watched from the sidelines and did my own thing locally. And then, um, then I started tagging the paint brands when I would, when I would post, I would tag the paint brands and, um, I'll always be indebted to Wiseau Paint because Wiseau Karen Chouinard was one of the first to share one of my pieces. And that felt so good. Like as a beginner, it felt so so good to see one of your pieces up on a big page and if you um, the paint brands don't like when you mix brands with other brands so if you're gonna share like that you want to try to keep your piece in one brand because they don't want to advocate another brand on their page um, so if you can keep it dedicated to a certain brand and share and tag and I've even had tags turn out to where, um, you know, major brands will contact me, not even paint brands, like for building my house, will contact me and say, we want to send you stuff. From where are the can? Oh, it looks like the ocean. Oh my, it does, huh? It really has that depth. It's the grays and the blues, and it has a little bit of green in it. Um, you don't feel you're good enough. Lynn, Lynn, I've seen your work. That shocks me. I've seen your work, Lynn. You are... You know, 
here's what else I'll say about posting your work. Yes, you have to put yourself out there and you will get criticism. And I've had criticism. You have to learn how to take it um, with a grain of salt sometimes. Everybody's got different tastes. You can't please everybody, blah, blah, blah. Um, so use that criticism though. People, people are willing to give you an opinion for free. So use it. You need this piece. Well, Emily, you're going to have to fight someone for it. <laughs> um, this one is committed. Most of my work I do is custom pieces. I keep an inventory of unfinished pieces. And people will come to me and say, I need a dresser. It needs to be 60 inches long. And I'll say, okay, here's what I've got. And then we design it together. So they send me, you know, 20 Pinterest pictures. And we look and I send them inspiration pictures. And we go back and forth until we iron out a finish and, a, and colors that they like. Um, and that's how this one came about. So I sent him a few different ones um, that I've done. And he said, yes, I like those finishes, but different colors. You really get a, a custom piece of furniture, which is, I think, special. You see my stuff, lady, and I post. I'm glad you guys are posting. Don't stop posting. Um, take, take the opinions. So here's what you do. Pay attention when you post something. One post will get you know, a thousand likes and one will get two and you'll be, and, and that tells you something. It tells you what do people like, what do you do well and what is being well received and take that and go with it. That's how, um, that's how I found my style. I didn't start out having a style of painting, but I would post my pieces and like, like I said, some pieces would get a thousand likes and some would get two. <laughs> And that told me, okay, people don't like this, you doing this stuff. It's not resonating with people. But when you do this style, for me, it was blending paint. When you do this style, people love it. So those were those free opinions. Marketing companies pay money for people to give their opinions. Take the free opinions that are out there and use them to get better. Um, use them to find your style, what you do well. You remember the first piece I did? I do. Um, so, like I said, it came from a rental property that we had, or that we still have, and my tenants destroyed it and left behind like six dump loads of stuff. We had to store it, because the state of California requires that you store it, so I couldn't just throw it away. So I left it and I came back to it like a year later and was like, I can't throw this away. I had seen chalk paint on Pinterest. I Pinterest everything. Come follow me on Pinterest, you guys. I'm on Pinterest too. And I have all my boards and stuff from my house. You can see what I'm looking at, you know, for a kitchen and what my inspiration is. I pin stuff for furniture inspiration. I get a lot of inspiration from canvas art, how people work on canvas. Um, I'm too chicken to work on canvas. Um, so I um, bought craft store supplies. What was the first color I used? It was a dark gray. I think it might have been a Rust-Oleum paint, which is not my favorite paint. It's thin. It's, I mean, it's inexpensive, but like with anything, you get what you pay for. It's thin, and the coverage isn't that great. So, but for a first timer, it was perfect. It was price right. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, you know, experiment with the cheap, cheap stuff. Make sure you like it. And then, you know, once I got better, I started buying. You know, I, I, of course, bought Annie Sloan, because everybody knows Annie Sloan. And then I bought some Wiesel. And then I bought Dixie Bell. And literally, literally, I had done one Dixie Bell piece. They posted it, and they contacted me. One. It can be that. I mean, it can be that quick, you guys. Sometimes that's all it takes if, if they like what they see. And since then... You know, this relationship I built with them is something I treasure. I genuinely love their products, so I'm happy to be working with a brand that that I like working with. It works great. It's great with my style. That's the thing. Testing out paints. Find the paint that works with your style. That may not be the same brand for everyone. They all have pluses and minuses. Every single one of them. I won't say anything about, about any paint brand because they all have their strengths and weaknesses. Um, there are things in the Dixie Belle paint line that I like more than others, and some that I like less than others. Um, you know, that's just the honest-to-God truth about any line. 
I get paint up here, you guys see where I'm looking? I will just come back with a um, piece of sandpaper and touch that up. Up here on my wood. You guys can't even see it. See here, I got a little bit of paint on this ledge. I will just take a little bit of sandpaper and buff it off when I'm done. So I'm not worried about that. What are you spraying? Just water. Just water. I'm using water and paint and a sea sponge and tons of brushes tonight. Um, so what was I going to say? So I have nothing bad to say about any paint, any paint line, any, you name it. I can tell you something in their line that I like and some that I dislike about it. Um, sorry, I'm using you guys as a mirror. Spring water. Yes. You love Dixie Belle. It works for my style. Dixie Belle has a long open life. So I can play with the paint, like I'm working this paint and I just add a little bit of water and it stays open for me to play around with it for an extended period of time. That works for the style of painting that I do. Um, you know, so that's going back to, that ties into sharing your work, finding your style and, and what you do well, what works for you. Take the opinions that people are willing to give and use them to your benefit. People love to give their opinions. And I value them, every single one of them. I look at the numbers, I look at shares, I look at, okay, okay, these are colors that people like. These are, this is something that will sell well because people like it, so that tells you what you can sell. Um, it's free marketing research out there for the taking. Um, and we're all trying to run a business, so, you know, I, I don't invest in marketing. Um, so when I post, these groups are just as valuable to me as they are to you guys. I really, really, really value the opinions and, um, you know, that people are willing to, to give that. That was how I learned to paint. You and Kristana. Kristana is... Amazing. I've been talking with her today. Um, Dixie Bell put one of my pieces on the back cover of Country Sampler magazine. Well, I can never find these magazines in print. I don't have any of them. I've never gotten a copy of one. So Kristana messaged me today. And Kristana is one of the most sincere, generous people um, that I've met. And she's like, girl, I have to send this to you. This isn't my work on the cover. You need this copy of this magazine. So Christina's is going to mail me her copy of Country Sampler. So I have a copy of the magazine with my piece on the back, on the back cover, on the back cover. Um, I, I'm not liking this here. I'm working it over and over again to try to get maybe, what am I doing wrong? This gray right here is wrong. Yeah. All right. I'm going to darken that up. I'm going to add some paint. Yeah, I thought I should carry the gray down, but it's not working right there. I actually need to carry the blue up, huh? Yeah, that's better. And because I'm layering the colors, it's okay that I've got gray under here and now I'm putting the blue on top of it. It's okay. Around. Thank you, Emily. Thank you for stopping by and watching. I'm just on painting tonight. What did you use when I didn't have a white wall? Um, so at first I used my garage door because I was painting in my garage. It was my workspace. And so it was easy for me. I'm a stay-at-home mom, so my husband works. And it was easy for me to drag the pieces out on my own to the front of my house and be able to take a photo of them. Well, then when I started getting more serious, I was like, okay, my, my garage door was gray, so it was a neutral color, but it was obviously a garage door, so it was a little tacky. I thought anyways, I mean, it worked fine, and I'm grateful for it because it started my business, so I will, I will forever be grateful for that gray garage door. Um, it served me well for a long time, but then I started talking to my husband, and I'm like, I don't think I can compete out on this stage if I don't improve my photos or, you know, try to, I need to figure something out. So we bought, um, we 
we bought bifold doors, white bifold doors. Um, I didn't have a lot of space for storage. We only had a two car garage and it was full of crap. Will change your whole life. Be prepared to never go back. I didn't see what you said, Celia. Your driveway is so crazy. <laughs> yeah, so go power wash your driveway, girl. Um, and so my husband helped me. We picked up some bifold doors that folded, you know, so they were only like 18 inches wide and I could fold them and stack them. And so I got three sets of those. And it was, again, something I could pull out on my own because my husband is at work most of the time when I'm doing this. He's not going to come home to help me stage a photo. Um, sorry, that door is banging. Um, and I would pull out the bifold doors. I got a rug to go underneath it. So, you know, in a photo, it wasn't ideal, but it looked better than my garage door. Um, and that's what I used until we moved to this house. And when we were designing this house, um, because it's a house that we designed, I got to really design my workspace. I have a sink out here. It's not hooked up yet, but it's out here. I have um, um, shelving for storage. We built an outbuilding that was, uh, you know, we call it our workshop, but I don't work in there because it's too far from my home. We connected this garage to our HVAC system it, well, it has the potential to be. Right now it's not because we aren't sure we want to heat and cool the garage. Um, I'm going to see how it is working out here first. I know it's, it's funny. It's, it's cool when people post back photos of them staging because when you see what goes on behind the scenes, you're like, <laughs> that picture looks fantastic and it's taken in your bathroom. You know, but people are extremely creative when it comes to staging. Um, so watch and learn and, and inspect the back. I, I'm not a huge fan of the artificial backdrops. I'm a huge fan, whatever you have to do to do it, of natural light. There is no artificial light that is, um, that even compares to natural light. So I'm going to back you guys up. I really like this. I need to blend more gray in up here. Yeah, I'm going to soften that transition. Let me find my brush with the gray. Here, let me work this in a little bit more. Um, make sure I got the right side of my sponge. Is that better? So it's just back and forth. Yeah, it is cool to see how creative people are in coming up with taking a picture that, you know, really has that wow factor that people stop and stare at. So um, it grabs their attention. All right, so this is kind of where I am. Let me back up so you guys can see the piece. I like it. I think it's pretty. It's got texture. It's got a variety of color. Yeah, it's changed from last night, but I, I showed you guys. I wanted to show you that first coat because that's really... That's just conceptualizing and laying color on, but it doesn't look like it's finished self, probably until this step. So I've done the whole front of this piece. Let me turn this light off so you can see the color difference. It's pretty. I like it's got some variation, like this little blue spot right here. I'm going to bring the camera in so you can see the texture in it. Um, it's moody. It's dramatic. I like this blue up here in the up to the corner. This will wrap around the side. I'm gonna go do the sides now. <laughs> I look into the camera and see how it looks. It's like a, it's like looking in a mirror, and things look different when you step away from it and come back to it. So that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, I seriously am in love with yeah. Dixie Bells, it's a great paint for beginners too. It's easy to use. There are a lot of paints that have, that are finicky, that have a learning curve. Um, um, you know, Fusion is one of them. I love Fusion mineral paint. It's beautiful, but it's a little finicky, so it can be tough if you're a beginner. Yeah, I changed, yeah. It really did change in an hour, huh? Yeah, you're right. I like that point too, Kylie, thank you. So I think it'll be really pretty. It's going to be really dramatic. Once you put a top coat on it, you know when you top coat chalk paint, it's like putting water on concrete and the colors just get so much deeper. Um, it's going to have gold hardware. 
I will put some gold gilding wax on places like here, you know, up in this little carving here. So it's going to have gold accents maybe, you know, around the door because the other piece I'm matching has gold too. What kind of camera stand do you have? It doesn't have a light. You want me to turn my camera around? I'm going to take you guys off and I will turn it around and show you. Don't look, don't look at the background because we haven't cleaned out. Sorry, I paused. Okay, I'm going to turn my camera around. Can I? Yes. Um, don't look at the background. We're still cleaning up the garage, guys. I'm only in my workspace, but this is the other side of my garage. That's our old refrigerator right here. I have all my Dixie Belle here. Um, this is going to be my workbench. It'll be a long workbench. I'm going to have a counter on it. It's all my storage. So this is my light. It's an 18-inch. Um, so they, they'd call it, a, you know, a Diva ring. But this is the generic brand. And I really like it. I'm happy with it. And it's this, this is the brand. Um, you know, I'll turn it back to me now. So I, I like it. It, um, it's great light for me. It changes the colors on my pieces a little bit from, from actual, but, but it's good camera light. And then your, my phone just sits in the center of it. Oh, Georgia, good. I'm so glad. I'm always open to answer any questions you guys have. I get a lot of messages all the time, but I appreciate your guys' questions. And I learned a lot this way, so I hope I can do that too. Yay, Dixie Bell delivery. I look forward to mine too. Sometimes I don't even know they're coming. Like they just send me an email and say, your Dixie Bell paint order has shipped. And I'm like, ooh, I wonder what it could be. Um, they have a calendar coming out with some really great pieces on it. Um, I think I'm January and July. Um, what else? There's a couple new products in the works. That's all I'm saying. Top coat, Dixie Bell satin top coat is my current favorite. I like Gator Hide for like um, dresser tops and things, T table tops that will get a lot of use, but Gator Hide, I or I'm sorry, Dixie Bell Satin. I love the soft sheen of it. Um, I love how it goes on. It's my favorite. All right, guys, I'm going to go. My husband's home, I think. He's messaging me. Where do I um, get it? So Gary, in the top of this post is my affiliate link for Dixie Bell. So that's how you guys, I'm compensated for this job is I get um, a a portion of sales made through that link and I appreciate every little bit this is a small business I work from home um, I'm learning I'm sharing with you guys as I do and that's how I'm compensated so Dixie Bell is chalk paint yes Dixie Bell is a chalk mineral paint um, so Dixie Bell has a built-in top coat it's self leveling so it has a lot of beautiful characteristics um, but the chalk mineral base is what gives it the adherence properties so you don't have to sand your piece back um, and prime it beforehand just clean well and depending on your surface you can just apply the paint and it I mean it it works I've said this before Dixie Bell comes in these little containers I'm holding my phone while I'm talking let me put you back on the stand um, sorry if this gets chatty okay so Dixie Bell comes in these containers let me show you guys again they're plastic I wash these out and I use them for like when I mix a color, I will store it in these plastic containers. So I wash them out. Um, I have other paint brands, like I mentioned tonight, and I will put them in these containers too. And what was a test, a true test for me is when I wash out the Dixie Bell paint in these, I have to take like a scraper and scrape the paint. And this is plastic. It's a shiny plastic. And I have to scrape the paint off the shiny plastic. I have other brands that I've put in these and I can put water in, shake it, and they rinse clean. That's no joke. It's no joke. I mean, you can try it yourself with other paint brands, but that really was a test of adherence to me. This is shiny plastic and I'm scraping the paint off to get it clean and other brands, I can shake it and, and they'll rinse out. No joke. I won't tell you what other brands, but um, I know I probably share too much, huh? You guys probably want to tell me to be quiet. Um, I'm not a people person, you guys. I'm usually really quiet and reserved. I don't like socializing. We booked our trip to, um, I'll keep painting while I'm talking, I guess. Because I really do want to get this piece done. Um, we booked our trip to Florida last night for the Dixie Bell Paint Conference. I'm nervous as all heck. Um, you can see here how that blue carries around to the side now. The jars are hard to clean. They are super hard. Some of them I throw away. Like a slick stick jar. Forget it, I'm not cleaning a slick stick jar. Um, 
they don't clean. Same with Gator Hide. Gator Hide's tough to clean. And that tells me too, like those are not clean up with water products. Those are your gripping products. It's funny, it's a gripping primer. I can't get it off the freaking container. Um, try to get this somewhat visible for you guys. My phone's plugged into a battery because it's gonna die. We need to invest in these blues. So this is the blues I have out in the Navy, Bunker Hill Blue, Midnight Sky, and then I've got a mixed color that's got some peacock and mermaid tail in it. Yes, yes, when you spill the paint, good luck cleaning it up. Yeah, I had some on my driveway and we had to power wash it when we went to sell our house to get the paint off. And it still was there in some spots. Ask the people who own my house now and they're like, oh, we hate that girl, she got paint everywhere. Um, yeah, <laughs> to I, I totally agree. But those are all tests of adherence, you know, different things you can put Dixie Doll on that it's really gonna last and weather well and wear well. So that was one of the things I was saying earlier is um, one of the things I used to do when I first started is I would wax tops. And I had a piece in my house and it was, the top was waxed and it looked great, but um, I stripped it back this year to put clear coat on it because um, it, it just doesn't have, it doesn't wear the same as, so I love wax on the body of a piece that's not getting like finger wear, it's beautiful, there's nothing like wax. Um, and I use it a lot for details. But when I know something's gonna get heavier use, like for a customer, for example, I don't wanna saddle them with that, that job of maintaining wax. Get this wet again. So I started out with Midnight Sky in the Navy, Bunker Hill. This is gonna be my mixed blue here. I'm switching brushes. Yes, okay, so I was talking about the conference. So the conference is a Dixie Bell conference. It's um, open to their retailers only. So if you're a Dixie Bell retailer, they, Dixie Bell does this annual conference to all those who sell their paint. And they are flying us brand ambassadors in to teach at the conference. Um, so me, Stephanie Kuhn, um, Fiona DeBell, um, gosh, Heather Marzigliano from Grace on Broadway, um, Drew Dodson, uh, Tracy Bellion with Tracy's Fancy. It is it is the who's who of painting this. It's an, an amazing lineup. I'm excited. Um, the uh, uh, headliner is um, help me out, guys. Jennifer Allwood. Jennifer Allwood from the Magic Brush, and I'm hoping that we get to break out and I get to go watch her because I want to hear her talk, her speak. She's amazing. Um, so it's, you know, several hundred people from what I know. And it's sold out this year. So I'm teaching over two days, um, five classes a day, 25 people each is what I know about. And it's, going to be in every room of the hotel that we're staying in. Every room is booked out for the Dixie Bell Conference. In fact, it was so big that they had to bring in tents for the Dixie Bell Conference, which is amazing. So I'm nervous. I'm a homebody. I don't travel well. We just booked our trip last night, so I'm really going. I really have to leave my house, um, but I'm nervous as all heck. So we get in on Friday night into Florida. And I'm coming from California, so it's a it's all day of traveling. Hi. My husband's home, you guys. Um, You're cheating on me, in Nevada. Oh me. shoot! I have to go. My husband's home. Just kidding. <laughs> That's what he expects me to say. Um. So let's see. We get in Friday night at like ten o'clock. Oh, Pam, yes. I know, I'm excited to meet you guys. Um, it's gonna take me a minute to put faces to names and uh, there's so many, so many people that I'm gonna be meeting that it's, uh, it's gonna be two days of adrenaline and coffee. That's all I can figure. Dustin Van Fleet, yes, thank you. Thank you, Gary, for helping me remember the names. Yes. Um, 
Dustin Van Fleet, Pam Haskins, yes, they're teaching at the conference as well. Um, um, Carrie from uh, Prima will be there to teach you guys transfers and all that kind of stuff. So I get in, it's, a, it's a, over a Saturday and Sunday, I get in Friday night at like 8 p.m. I will have been playing all day and I have to be there the next morning at 8 a.m. to teach to hundreds of people that I haven't met and um, so I'm nervous. I'm nervous about being prepared and knowing what to say and making my class valuable. Nicole, will you be there? Um, I want my class to be so valuable that people leave there. So glad that they took it and feeling like they could go home and do the things I taught. Um, so I really want it to be valuable. If you're going and you have suggestions or things you want to learn from me, please tell me. Feel free to message me because I would love to know that. Um, and then I can incorporate that stuff into my class and tell Dixieville what supplies I would need beforehand. And um, So really I've told them what I think I need, but I can change that still. So message me if there's something you want to see or do and like let me try to incorporate it. Because I really want you guys to be glad you took my class. Even if you're not glad you're watching this video right now. I was gonna get off, but I told you guys this was just gonna be me yapping and painting. If you're if you're bored, sorry. Um, you're jumping in late. Hi Heidi. Might have missed. Did you sand paint? Did you sand all the paint? No, um, um, no. So I did the prep on this piece. I have a video. Um, I put it's on the, my same page from yesterday where I did the base coat on this. And my prep on this piece was, um, what was my prep on this piece? My prep on this piece was um, Dixville Boss and Clear. Um, and that was it. My top I did strip because it's gonna be a wood stain top. So up here, this is the only part that I took back to bare wood. Otherwise, I did my coat of Dixville Boss and Clear and started painting. So that's on video from last night. And then I had said, I'll come back tonight and do my second coat. So this is my second coat. Let me wet this a little bit. I'm trying to get it to a point on this side that I like. I'm kind of there. I'm using a sea sponge, whole bunch of Dixie Belle blues. Um, and grays. Driftwood, Manatee Gray, um, Gravel Road, a custom mix, and then Bunker Hill Blue, In the Navy, Midnight Sky. Yeah, that's it. So what do I have? Seven colors. I didn't know I would be on tonight either. Sometimes I just come on. So um, for Dixie Bell, all of our lives, we um, plan out a month in advance. So I know those, but on my own page, I just you know, I can do my own thing. So it's a little more willy-nilly on my own page than on the Dixie Bell page. Those are all planned. A month in advance. How's that look? It's kind of moody, kind of dark. It's contemplating something. What am I seeing? There's a spot. It's this right here. Come that out. I don't like it. All right. All right, that's one side. So I'm going to do the other side. I'm really going to get off though because my husband's home and he's calling me. I'm ready to get off the camera. I'm not a camera person, I swear. You know, just one more spot and then I end up doing like the whole piece again, right? All right. You guys like it? So that's the front again. It's pretty. What do you think? My son's out here with me now. Um, thank you, Danielle. I know, Karen, it's only 35 minutes, so they've talked about maybe opening up a conference for the public, but I hate to travel, and I'm scared of teaching. I don't teach. I teach on video because it scares me. I don't teach classes because it scares me. Um, 
So I don't know. So we'll see how it evolves in the future. But right now I'm excited. This is my first conference. Like Stephanie's taught at, you know, Stephanie Kuhn of Rehab to Fab has taught at conferences. I know Carrie does it all the time. Fiona DeBella has done it before, but this is my first conference, you guys. So coffee and adrenaline. I'm going to let you guys go. Thanks everyone for watching. I should be done with this piece in the next few days and I'll get pictures posted. And then you can refer back to this video and my video from last night. And you'll have my whole paint finish on camera. Okay. All right. Thank you guys. Have a good night.